there. Welcome to the 412 Canada podcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kim Hutchins. At 412, we're equipping the church for greater influence through serving. 412 is a ministry of Faith Baptist Church in Huntsville, Ontario. We are so excited to be able to continue to equip you through our podcast and YouTube. Today, I'm excited to have Steve Lensing back. Steve is a producer and musician whose projects have been nominated for and or won Canadian Gospel Music Awards and Juno Awards. He was named Producer of the Year at the Canadian Gospel Music Awards in 2020. In this episode, we're going to chat about serving at the church during pandemic and post-pandemic times and how that impacts expectations and serving opportunities. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks for having me. I gotta say, the <laughs> intros, you're so dialed in. That oh. feels like a lot of pressure, but you're doing great. It's really, Thank really you. good. That Thank was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, really good. Sorry, I'm breaking the fourth wall. It's okay. Wall, you know? No, that's all right. Yeah. Good. good. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be yeah, here. Yeah, I'm Appreciate so glad it. that you can be here. Yeah. And one day we might have people in too, so then they can see it in person. It fe- doesn't that feel like such a long ways away or like such a foreign <gasps> thing, like to be in the same room with a lot of people? But yeah, yeah I am very much looking forward to that. I know, yeah. me too. And I yeah. mean, since we've been doing this, because we weren't able to do the conference right. with 300 of my closest friends, yes. which is what I'd love. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it feels like, uh, in a lot of ways, though, uh, we talked about this a bit as we were planning for this. Yeah. But, like, I think what you're doing here is really great, like, really oh, valuable. Thanks. And, like, yeah, the restrictions have forced you to think outside the box a little bit, but mm-hmm. this is so great. I love what you're doing here, and I'm looking forward to watching uh, your conversations <laughs> with a lot of the other guests, too. It's oh, been great. Thanks, Steve. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. So, how have you and Brooke been doing? We're doing well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a crazy year for us, but uh, we talked about this already, but yeah. we have a new baby, and mm-hmm. so, yeah, we're doing great. We're adjusting to to life with a new baby, and we have an old fixer-upper house, and so we're constantly projects. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some of your projects that you've been doing, right? Yeah, it feels like they're never-ending. <laughs> like, you start one, and then it makes three more for mm-hmm. you to do, and so, uh, but we're having fun. Yeah. It's our first house, and oh, uh, God. we're learning together, watching lots of YouTube videos, and, like, yeah. figuring it out, so. Yeah. We just did a bathroom uh, before our baby came, so a couple months ago, and that was, like, a big, like, a disaster. It was, oh, my goodness. Yeah, big learning. Bye. Yourself? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Brooke would not be so excited about attempting projects like that, but I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit more like, yeah, let's give it a shot. I'm let's really try it. DIY. I like that stuff. So, and my dad's pretty savvy. So between YouTube and calling my dad, it's uh, we get it done. So, Good. Yeah. yeah. Did you grow up in a household that was constantly yeah, renovating? Always. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it's not always. foreign yeah, to you at all. Yeah, it feels very normal yeah, to me yeah. to live in that kind of chaos. But like, I think for Brooke, <laughs> like we we got new stairs also recently, and I haven't yet like painted the stairwell or anything okay. like that. And so it's been like unfinished for a few months. And she's like, "Are we gonna?" Th-? And like for yeah. me, that's very normal yeah. to live in that in between. And she's like. <laughs> When are you? When are you gonna finish this? So, yeah, yeah. We're but we're ma- we're figuring it out. We're making it yeah, happen. So, yeah, that's good. It's good. Well, and along with changes, not just at your house, but in production. Let's talk yes. about because this right. year, things have changed in every area, yeah, right? And absolutely. so I just wanted to kind of run through them all, like your editing and your audio, right, and your mixing and streaming services. How has that changed? Yeah, I think. Uh, <clears throat> In a lot of ways, the pandemic has has challenged churches to uh, catch up in ways uh, where maybe we weren't before. Like, yeah, as I think especially about you know our church context back home, uh, and we weren't streaming services before the pandemic. Oh, you uh, weren't. Lots of churches were, okay, but we yeah, weren't. Yeah, I thought you guys were. Okay. And yeah, like we go to a church that's fairly, uh, you know, it's a bigger church, and mm-hmm. production has always been a big focus, but we weren't streaming, and so. The pandemic has forced us to like catch up in that sense because, um, you know, as you know, like that's not yeah. really an option anymore to not have an online service, right? It's right. In this season, and I think going forward, like that's here to stay, online mm-hmm. services, right? And so now, we're talking about, um, you know, maybe a lot of churches are doing live services, so you're live streaming. So there's mm-hmm. that whole thing to figure out. 
how do we get video and audio and synced up and yeah. into the computer and are we using OBS, are we Facebook, YouTube, right. all that stuff. Uh, and then other churches are pre-recording and, and that's what our church is doing. Yeah. And so then you're talking about audio capture for the band and for the sermon and then mixing, yeah. right? And then video capture and editing. And so there's like... Well, and you uh, wanted to stay consistent, right? Through all those different people filming. Yes, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and for most churches, uh, ours included, like... Uh, the majority of the team is volunteer, right? And yeah. so then you're, yeah, you're working with a wide variety of people. And so, yeah, it's lots of new and lots of learning, but uh, lots of exciting. With new stuff comes opportunity too, right? So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think you guys will continue doing the pre-recorded? Yeah, or that's you think a, you'll start, you it's know? a good question. Uh, I always joke, I'm not on staff at the church, so I always joke that like <laughs> decisions like that are above my pay grade. Cause, but um, yeah, I think we will continue. Uh, the tentative plan right now is that, uh, so whenever we go back to live services, mm -hmm. we'll film uh, the worship from that service. Okay. And then we'll, during that week, edit and mix it. And then that will be the online worship for the following week. Okay. So it'll be live on week one, and then it will be uh, the internet service or the online service in week two. But mm -hmm. then the sermon will be live every week. Right. Because that's a little bit easier to manage, right? I know. One it's just one part. And, yeah, right. A little bit simpler. <laughs> um, but that's the plan right now. So we'll keep doing the, the mixing and the post uh, on the music. Yeah. And then the sermon will continue to be live. So, But as we all know, anything can change, right? Lots I of, know. Uh, And I would assume uh, it will be some amount of experimentation, right? When we oh, get back sure. to that place of live services, we'll try stuff and figure out what works best. And, yeah. Yeah. And wow. what do you think like has been the biggest change overall? Yeah, I think the biggest change, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before we started, but mm -hmm. um, the I think the removal of the in-person aspect of what so many of us who serve in production and even in music at churches, the removal of that in-person interaction mm -hmm. um, has been... I think the biggest change, and it's you know obviously necessitated all the stuff we just talked about, editing and mixing and all that stuff. But it's also I think changed the way um, the serving experience has been. Right? Yeah. Uh, I was talking to my wife about this. My yeah. wife is a worship leader, and uh, she would say that leading worship virtually is a lot harder than leading worship in person. Mm -hmm. In part because you're just pouring out and you get no feedback, right? Oh, that's and I true. think the same is true even for those of us who are behind the scenes editing and mixing. You know, I find myself in my studio every week mixing our services and I just often don't hear anything back, right? You just yeah. send it out, you're like, oh, I hope. And then you watch it on Sunday, <laughs> like, we'll watch it on Sunday morning from our living room and yeah. I'm like, yeah, the mix was good. Like, yeah. but like you never, you but never nobody see else anybody, says right? Anything, yeah. right? So, so you, who knows? Yeah. What they're and thinking. so like, you, you never see the, we talked about the, this a bit on the yeah. podcast, but you never see the fruit of your labor, right? Yeah. So I think that's uh, been a really difficult thing to like keep. There's all of a sudden all, it seems like more work to yeah. get the same thing happening, right? All the either live streaming or, or editing and, and mixing after the fact. There's all this more work, but we don't necessarily see what's coming. So that's been a big change and I think a really hard thing to, mm -hmm. yeah, to adjust to for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what do you see for people's expectations? Like, do you perceive that people watching this are expecting something, like, really well done? Or what do you think that the I, expectations are? I do think so. And what started me thinking about this, so uh, at our house, when we watch the ser our services, we watch it on YouTube because that's just, like, mm -hmm. you know, we got the little streaming box, whatever yeah, it's called, yeah. and YouTube's on there. And then, like, immediately after our service is over, like, the next one up is Elevation, right? Or, like... Oh. <laughs> The belonging co. It just like it's the algorithm, yeah. right? It's throwing yeah. you the next video, and so then you tune it. And like, again, like our church has always been like fairly production heavy, and we're I think we do a pretty reasonably good job. And then you mm -hmm. watch like an elevation service, and it's like, like it's like you're watching a U2 concert. Like it's oh the production is unbelievable. And so I think um, because everything is forced online and it's so easy to see what everybody else is doing. Yeah. It's easy to compare things because like with the algorithm, they're literally right beside each other, right? Yeah. So now I think people's expectations are higher because, um, you know, when you're in a building and the guitar player makes a mistake, if you're in the moment, it's not as big of a deal, no. I think. But something about being in front of the TV or in front of your computer it just separates the experience enough for people to be like, 
Yeah, the expectations are higher, I think. The comparison is real. Yeah. So, like, what do you think they're comparing it to? Just the next one or the higher? Yeah, I think, like... I think the higher, and, and you see it too, right? People share, yeah. people are quick to share stuff on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, right? So they share a quick video from an elevation or a hill yeah. song or one of those churches that scale wise are so much bigger than, at least I think for most of our context, yeah. right? And then people get used to seeing that. Right, that That's kind true. of production quality where the stage is gigantic and they have, and and not that any of that is wrong or bad, yeah. but I think people get used to seeing that in the virtual church world, and then, you know, go, come to our <laughs> church and it's like you know it's pretty average, right? Or, right, or, yeah. And and not to downplay what what we're doing or what any local church is doing, but I I just think that comparison to some of those bigger churches that, yeah, have been doing it for a long time and have bigger it's budgets. It's true, and, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard to, to be compared to that. Yeah. yeah, it's really hard. So then how can maybe a local smaller church keep up? Like what, what's something maybe they could do? Yeah. So, you it's, know, just to do a better job or to be encouraged. That's a really good question. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it can be discouraging, right? To be yeah. like, well, you know, my church is 300 people. I'm never going to be Hillsong. And so yeah. I, I think it's two, to start with two uh, acknowledgments. One to, I think to recognize that people do have a high expectation. So mm -hmm. we probably mm -hmm. can't just ignore it, right? We can't yeah. just uh, do an iPhone and, and it's here on the table and the angle's all weird and like I'm just going to play the guitar. And, like, yeah, that's just not going to cut it. Right. So we have yeah. to understand that if we're going to do the online streaming service thing, uh, we probably have to invest a bit of time and money into it and mm -hmm. energy and all that stuff. Like, So the expectation is real and we need to recognize that. But then, two, we also need to recognize that uh, for most of us, we're probably not going to be that Elevation Hillsong, mm -hmm. like that big thing. And so uh, we don't need to spend crazy money on lights and yeah. all that kind of stuff. We need to be realistic about what we're going to be. So mm -hmm. understand that it, people have these expectations and we do need to do our best to be great and to do, it, do what we do with excellence, but at the same time recognize that... Uh, we can't put unfair expectations on ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where I think the local church always has an advantage yeah. uh, to somebody watching, you know, a service from Australia or from the States or wherever, not local, is that uh, we have that local connection. And so I think to, for us as churches to understand what our identity is and mm -hmm. who we are and what we do well, and then do that thing with excellence so that it's not the Zoom video with the camera there, right? So, like, yeah. figure out who we are, what we do with excellence. It's probably not going to be the Elevation Hill song thing, but do what we do the best that we can. Um, and, and then, yeah, I think it is important to, um, yeah, to recognize that expectation and think, like, especially for churches that maybe didn't, like for our church that didn't have online services yeah. before, uh, that we do need to probably invest some time, energy, money, training into this thing because, mm -hmm. you know, we look at it. So our church is multi-site. We had a couple different campuses before. And now we think of online as like another campus. So in okay. the same way that we would, you know, we when we think about planting another, like a, a campus that's going to meet in a high school, we have to get them a soundboard and speakers yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we think the same way about online. So we're probably going to have to invest in some more gear, some equipment, mm -hmm. uh, some more team members, probably some training, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. so think of it that way, that we are going to take it seriously and, uh, yeah, invest in it a little bit. And I think people don't realize even just the time involved, right? Right, It's yeah. quite a bit more than just slapping something together. For sure. And yeah. even, yeah, like for those of us that haven't done it before, like the mm -hmm. learning curve, right? Like we were talking about video yeah. before this. <laughs> And like, As I, I'm learning to edit. Right. And like, seems like you're killing it, by the way. Oh, thank you. And like, for me, that is like the thing I know least about. And yeah. don't, like, I'm an audio guy, like video for me, it's a different language. And, yeah. but so like to learn that stuff, it takes time. Mm -hmm. You have to really invest in it. And yeah, it is a learning curve. It's hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's worthwhile, right? To do it well, to, yeah. 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 yeah the finished product really, it just makes such a difference. Right. And you think about the opportunity, right? To reach people that. Uh, well, for one thing right now, are isolated at home, right? Yeah. They haven't seen a lot of people. That is important. But mm -hmm. then also to reach people that maybe wouldn't have come to your building before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like people that for geography reasons or whatever um, can't get to your building. It's so valuable. So mm -hmm. it, it is an opportunity. 
it's complicated, it's intimidating, <laughs> but it is an opportunity, right? Yeah, so, it is. Yeah. Um, and so how would a church practically get a unified mix for sound? Good Even question. video would be good, but let's start with sound. How would they do that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so for us, whether it's me mixing our service or we, we have another guy that mixes as well, um, mm -hmm. we do use a template. So we start from uh, the same place every time. It's not always okay. going to be the same, right? Different team Because it could be different people doing it, right? Yeah, so you want to exactly. start from the same place. Yeah, so we start with a template. Uh, it's not a set it and forget it thing, though. Right. I'm like, you know, we, we just put everything through this. So I'm talking now about post-mixing our mm -hmm. services. Um, but yeah, we start from a template because that gets us in the same relative ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, because I think consistency is important. If you change it every week and it's different every week, mm -hmm. then you're creating that much more work for yourself, right? Yeah. So like to adjust to a new thing every week. So to create some kind of consistency and, uh, and yeah, use a template if you can, if that makes it easier. You know, lots of churches are working with digital consoles now and mm -hmm. they come with... Uh, templates or you can buy them online right there's so many resources online for stuff like that and same if you're mixing after the fact like in a in a digital audio software okay templates like that now i said this on the podcast when we chatted last yeah. year don't lean on the template like don't you can buy like a template from bethel music for mixing your services right. or whatever <laughs> don't buy that and expect you're going to sound like bethel right. but if you want to get that <laughs> as a starting, a starting plate, place yeah, yeah. that yeah. could be really helpful to like <laughs> These are the guardrails, you know what I mean, yeah. of where we're going. And then I think to agree on on what your what the expectation is and what you're going for, mm -hmm. right? If it's if at our church, me and the other guy who makes the services, if we both just get to do whatever we want, it's, they're probably going to come out pretty different, even yeah. if we start with that template. So, you know, for the worship pastor at our church to set some ground rules of like, this is kind of what we're expecting. Good. You know, yeah. we talked about this on the podcast too, yeah. but like especially for worship music, like the vocals got to be up front. Yeah. We're not like a super rock and roll church, so it's not going to be guitars way right. out in front. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff like that, that kind of helps um, give some ground rules or mm -hmm. some boundaries for what we're doing. But yeah, use a template. And, and I think too, uh, one of the big learning curves for me over the last year is time, right? Mm. So when you're mixing every week, and especially when you're pre-recording and mixing, you only have a certain amount of time. At most, you have a week, right? Yeah. And so... Uh, a template can help you do things faster, right? Okay. So it, it'll get you a bunch of the way just right out of the gate. So I think time to figure out ways to make things faster too is really important. That's a good because idea. yeah, we while while we do want to commit to it and make it important, we can't commit our whole probably our whole I week know. to it, right? Like because we're volunteers. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so like yeah, expectations are important too yeah. in that sense. But yeah, so use a template, get you part of the way there, create a unified sound. Uh, set expectations and ground rules, but then let people, yeah, let people do their own thing. Yeah. Like to, because I think, yeah, like I said on the podcast, we can't lean on the template. We have to know what we're doing with mm -hmm. EQ and compression and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think, I say this from a place of ignorance because I'm not a video guy, but there's lots of the same principles for video. Well, I was right? going to say, do you think there's a template for video, right? And then you can start from there and 100%. go? 100%. Okay. For, like, yeah. I think, color correction and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. You should have a video guy on here who can, like, or a video <laughs> should, person right? who can like, really speak from experience because I'm talking a little bit out of ignorance. But, <sighs> yeah, so, and, and uh, that is one thing I would say, that there are so many resources online for mm -hmm. churches mm -hmm. now, especially as, uh, like, in the last year, yeah. And you, some of them might be, you know, a bit of money to buy a template like that mm -hmm. or whatever, but there's so many resources out there and training videos and things like that to help your team get to a place where, yeah, we're doing it with excellence. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. And now with all of that, have you found any unique ways to try to train volunteers during this time? Right. Because we can't always quite be hands on right now. Yes. So how can we uniquely train those that are serving? Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of the things I think that's interesting about this season uh, that's worked really well for us is that um, we have now all this content, right? So before, mm -hmm. like if we were going to train a new sound tech, they would have to come on Sunday or maybe if we have a rehearsal, they come on Wednesday and they mm -hmm. watch another person. Yeah. And then... At some point, you make the jump where they're on their own, right? right. They're driving the ship, and then it's like a Sunday morning. You're like, yeah. I hope the new person does <laughs> you okay. hope it goes well. Like, <laughs> but now what we have is all this pre-recorded content, right. right? And so I can give a new audio engineer like a full Sunday recording. Mm. Here's all the tracks. 
uh, from the multi-track and just try it out. Like this week, just try some stuff. Let me listen to your mix. Oh, and then, or actually, even like an edit, great. right? I have yeah. all this raw footage. Let's try a, a, or if there's a video switcher thing for a live stream thing, yeah. here's all this footage that we have in advance. Like, just give it a shot. Try it this week. So it's really low pressure, right, of a way for that people to try nice. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think, been a really, uh, like, yeah, it feels like we're recording all this content and feel, yeah. can feel tiring, but it can be really valuable for stuff like that, for yeah. ways to train people and for people to get, yeah, acquainted with how we do things uh, without it being the pressure of, mm -hmm. okay, it's live, like, don't mess it up. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, right? So That is a little bit easier, right, if someone was going to step out of their comfort zone and try it? 100%. Oh, man, takes that pressure right off. Yeah, really yeah. low pressure. And yeah. even, um, you know, I know a lot of, like, digital consoles, like audio consoles that people are using, have the ability to, so even if it's not mixing in like a digital audio software, like post mixing, mm -hmm. um, a lot of consoles you can play stuff back through it. So you, okay. so it would be as if you were mixing on a Sunday morning. So that's been a, yeah a huge advantage of having all this pre-recorded mm -hmm. content. Yeah. Now, what about bringing in teens or youth? Have you been able to bring, even, especially even during this time? Yeah. Right. Reach well, out to them and get them trained yes. and involved. Yeah, and I think that's one of the. I mean, like, I'm going to sound like the old guy here, <laughs> oh, no. but that's like the advantage of like having so much new technology to learn is like yeah. often I find young people are like ten steps ahead already, right? Okay. So like something like video that feels like so so much to learn for me, like learning a new yeah. language, for a lot of people that might be interested in it, they've already been, and with the access they have to software oh, and yeah. things like that, they're yeah. already like a step ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, yeah, it, this is a great way to engage with young people because yeah, they're already technologically minded. Like even yeah. things like TikTok, like video editing, it's just second nature to people now, right? Like, it's true, and yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I think there's a real advantage there. And I think too, um, yeah, some of this stuff, I think video editing and audio mixing, like in post, has a more, like maybe more of an appeal than the joining the sound team on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Like where that would seem like, oh, that's the old guys who mix at the back. And like, whereas <laughs> it's true, like, right? yeah, with post yeah. mixing and video editing, like you're sitting behind a computer, it's yeah. kind of, and they can see that like there's real world application, right? Of mm -hmm. like, I can learn how to record and like maybe I can record my own music or I can record my friend's music. Like for me who does producing now full time, like if I had had the opportunity to learn this stuff when I was 14, like yeah. it would have been amazing. Oh my like, goodness. And you think about, like I know in even in mainstream music, like in pop music, so many of the players that play for huge artists now grew up playing in church mm -hmm. because that was a way for them to play every week, right? And right. so think about these peop these kids that are growing up now in churches where they're video editing every week, they're mixing every week, like what they're gonna do in culture oh, yeah. in the next 10 years, yeah. like making movies or making records, oh, so all that cool. kind of stuff. It's like, it's really exciting to me, I think, that yeah, there's gonna be a whole generation of kids who now have an opportunity to cut their teeth on Sunday mornings and learn mm -hmm. and then apply that in the world. It's amazing, yeah. I think it's so exciting. That I'm very jealous. Cool. Yeah. Like when I, when I was growing up, it was not this, right? No, like not at all, you right? You had the massive soundboard at the back with all the knobs, and I was just like, that's oh. not for me. But, yeah, I think it's really cool. It's a great opportunity, yeah, to engage yeah. youth and, and get them involved. It's awesome. Okay, and how do you find is to develop the right team? Like how do you, what's your process for onboarding new people to find the right fit for the team and then nurture a healthy team? Yeah, that's In a really right? good question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, for onboarding, it's it's a lot the same as what we were doing before. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, if you want to, you know, it might be around a sermon series around serving or spiritual gifts or something. Hey, if you want to get involved, yeah. here's one way. You know, there's a worship team, whatever, if you play an instrument. But here's a whole new opportunity for you to serve uh, in production. Yeah. And so the onboarding is a lot the same in that sense of, like, just putting it out there for people mm -hmm. wanting to join. I think you do have to work a little bit harder now because you're not face-to-face -face with mm -hmm. people where you could... You used to be able to chase people down, right? Yeah. Hey, like, you want to get... Come on, just come on back to the soundboard <laughs> yeah. check it out. So you have to do a little bit more pursuing people, I think, okay. with virtual. Um, 
And then the training can be a little bit more difficult, right? Because you, yeah. like you said, especially with restrictions, if you're at 10 people in the building or whatever, it's a little bit harder. But like we talked about earlier, there are creative ways now to train people and get mm -hmm. people on board. And then um, one of the things that's been, in terms of fostering team, one of the things that's been really helpful at our church, our worship pastor has started this now in the last few months. Every Monday, he does a video and just posts it on YouTube and on Facebook for the team to see. And it's talking about updates and new stuff. Oh, good. And, uh, and then often he'll involve uh, worship team members or production team members to just like either give an encouragement or life mm -hmm. update or something like that. So just trying to engage with the team uh, in a virtual way. Yeah. I know it's not always the same as being together and hopefully, you know, as the summer comes and we can do things outdoors, we can engage a little bit in person. Yeah. But I think there are ways to connect virtually. And then I think this has always been true, but the one-on-one -on -one connection is so important. So, it is, right? Yeah, it's huge. I get texts from our worship pastor who is like my boss when I think about yeah. mixing audio. <laughs> uh, I get texts from him once a week and, yeah. and, you know, he just says like, hey, you doing okay? Like, do you need a break? How you doing? Oh, good. How's everything going? Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that personal connection stuff still is important, even though mm -hmm. I don't see him every week, right? It's always virtual, but... Uh, yeah, it's really important to stay connected like that and to keep checking in with people because mm -hmm. we talked about this on the podcast, but uh, people are serving probably less frequently now than before, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, keep that connection up mm -hmm. uh, and, and try and connect people together as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. Well, and for those that aren't serving regularly, what is the best way that they could grow their skills? Yeah, good mm -hmm. question. Um, yeah, I think uh, some of those online resources like we were talking about before, like yeah. that are available, are such a great way uh, to keep your chops up. And even for me, um, who like I often get paid to mix stuff, mm -hmm. so like you could call me a professional maybe, uh, <laughs> but I'm still looking for ways to keep my chops up. And so like watching videos, yeah. I'm trying to every week like just be looking for new ways to learn. And like, mm -hmm. so I think there's... Um, yeah, it's an advantage that there's so much content out there, so much training that we can always learn about new stuff. And uh, yeah, like for me, like video is a world I know nothing about, but I want to learn more about. So like I'm trying to take in videos that are teaching training about video and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I think that's one way. Just try and consume content as much as possible. And then, uh, yeah, like try and keep your chops up uh, by actually doing stuff. So yeah. like, yeah, maybe you're not mixing the service every week, but get those multi-tracks from the worship pastor and just do, like just try maybe just once practice. a month. Yeah, yeah, practice or practice and edit or um, yeah, check out another church, what they're doing and really not from a sense of just like watching, but like evaluating. Like, you know, I watched the Elevation service and I'm thinking about like, how does that mix sound like that? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, and like trying doing? to learn. This week I watched a video about, um, was it Elevation? I think it was. Anyways, talking about using drum samples in their mix okay. for their live stream service, and that was like yeah. something new for me. And so, like, yeah, I think there's so, and then, and then, but then actually trying that, like mm -hmm. putting it to, to the test. And so, yeah, I think there's lots of ways to keep your chops up. I think it's one of those things that can feel tedious. Like, mm -hmm. we talked about this on the podcast too. Yeah. It's hard, right? When you're at home alone and you're not with the team together yeah. in the same space, it's hard to feel motivated. But, that is the way you grow the most. I know that for me, like the way I've grown the most is when I've set my mind to learning something new and practicing it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you really see the benefit of that for oh, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's huge. And what, for what about churches that are maybe are smaller or starting from a, a simpler position yes. and they need or want to just improve on their production? You know, what are some of the first steps that they could take? Yeah, good question. Yeah. I think, um, so we talked about this already, but to agree that we are going to spend some money and time and mm -hmm. energy on this thing, mm -hmm. we're going to invest mm -hmm. in it, uh, and then taking advantage of those resources. I think one of the best things I've seen in the last year is on Facebook. I don't go on Facebook a lot, but I'm a part of a few uh, like church service production groups, Yeah, and it's so encouraging to me. This happens, like I see it every week. Somebody comes on hey, we're a really small church, we're live streaming, we're having this problem, we're using this yeah. OBS software and this thing keeps happening. And then, you know, there's some guy from a huge church in the States that like is light years ahead in terms of live, live streaming and they just come on and it's so kind and gracious and like, yes. hey, try this. And so yeah. like, 
I uh, love that community, right? It's amazing. Those and groups. like yeah. guys who you might think like, oh, that church is so big, mm -hmm. they have no time for me. One of their team members is just on Facebook. It takes them five minutes to write yeah. out a reply, and it's awesome. Yeah. So you all of a sudden have access to all these people that have been doing it for a long time, uh -huh. lots of experience. Which so you, before you never would have, right? No, right. You think about it. 100%. So that's like, such a blessing. You might call that church and try and like talk to them. And, <laughs> yeah. and if they're local, you might have gone and seen what they were doing, and they mm -hmm. would show you like, here's our new PA system or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. now I think you have this opportunity to get really tailored feedback. Yeah. In addition to all these videos that might teach you about drum sampling or mm -hmm. all this stuff, you have the opportunity to ask really specific feedback of like, and there's no judgment because no. I think everybody recognizes that they were in that spot once too, right? That's true. That everybody, yeah. even the churches that are doing unbelievable live streams and mixing and all that stuff, they started from that place too, right? Mm -hmm. At one point. And so that's been really cool. So I would say definitely get plugged into some of those. And I'll send you some links to yeah. see maybe you can post them. Uh, For sure, in our show notes. Group. Yeah. Good. Um, but yeah, there's some really great groups that are just doing, I think, amazing job of connecting mm -hmm. small churches, big churches. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Yeah. And what about um, for those that are serving in production? It's been quite the year. What's something mm. that you could say just to encourage them? And even for those that are leading a production team, what's something that they could do to encourage those that are serving under them? Yeah, good question. Um, one of the things that's been super encouraging for me, we talked about this already, yeah. but like sitting alone in the studio mixing, <laughs> you get this tunnel vision, right? And you forget yeah. that it's actually connecting with real people. And so our worship pastor has been really diligent about um, getting feedback from congregation members and then passing it along to oh, the team. So he'll often send a text like, hey, Mrs. Johnson sent me this message this week, just wanted to pass it along to you guys, and mm -hmm. it's, hey, I'm so blessed by the worship this week. And so, like, to continue that feedback loop so that people who are serving in production behind the scenes don't forget that there are real people engaging with yeah. this. So uh, whether that's just uh, whoever's the leader of the production team just reaching out to congregation members or creating some kind of, like, feedback form or something, or often it's just from the chat on, you know, Facebook Live mm -hmm. or whatever. He'll just pull a comment out of there. Oh, so, yeah, if you're a team leader, be diligent about that to, to get feedback from the congregation and then pass that on to your team members mm -hmm. to, to keep that encouragement going because I think it is easy to forget that there are people engaging with it, right? Yeah. Especially as we sit at home on our own, <laughs> you know, it can get tiring. So, yeah, create an opportunity for that feedback to get back to the team I think is really important. And it's been so encouraging to me personally to, to hear that from people. So, yeah. 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 Thanks, Steve. You are such a wealth of information for production, and I love it. Thank and you. And I know that our production team here, too, also appreciates it. So I appreciate the time that you were taking oh, to spend great. with us and to share your insights. Well, and if there's any encouragement, <laughs> I feel like I uh, am always learning. So, like, for, for everybody... I hope, uh, yeah, that's an encouragement that, like, yeah. I'm still learning. So if you feel like you're still learning, you're in a good spot. Yeah. It's going to be great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We're all still learning. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, well, thanks again, Steve, for yeah. being here. Thank you for having me. It's great. <laughs> All right, for those that are joining us, I hope that you are encouraged to serve at your local church. If you have any questions for Steve or ways that you can serve, check out our show notes for all the links and contact options there. And for those that are listening to the audio version of the podcast, remember to subscribe on your podcast app. And those joining us by video, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Also, hop onto the discussion. Follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at 412 Canada. Looking forward to next time. Thanks for joining us. I lost the ending again too, so oh, I was yeah. like, oh, I hope that's right. Just, can you? There just for a second, I took pictures. Yeah. Oh, sure. While you're there. Sorry, go ahead. Do you control the speed of that? Like, yeah. can you? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. There are, so there are Bluetooth tools that you can even have in your hand. And oh. just speed. Yeah, but I was like, oh, no, I'm losing it. <laughs>